You know, today we're gonna tackle a question that's so fundamental, you might not have even realized it's a mystery. And that is, why do things work? We're diving into a fascinating new framework that tries to explain why the universe, your computer, and well, information itself don't just collapse into total chaos. Okay, so let's just jump right into the central mystery. I mean, in a world that is just jammed packed with countless interacting parts, why do we see order and stability? Why isn't everything just random noise? Why do complex systems seem to follow any rules at all? I mean, really think about it for a second. Your computer boots up the exact same way every single time. The laws of physics are, well, they're consistent. This incredible reliability is something we totally take for granted, but it's a really deep puzzle. Given the literally infinite number of things that could go wrong at any moment, why do things so reliably go right? Now, the usual explanation we hear is that systems are, well, they're smart. We say they learn from their mistakes, or they adapt to their environment, or they optimize themselves to find the most efficient outcome. But the theory we're digging into today suggests something completely different. It argues that stability isn't learned, it's just built in from the very beginning. Okay, to really get our heads around this, we're going to use an analogy that I think makes this whole concept just click. Let's imagine for a minute that the world is a video game. So your character is running around, right? But they aren't really freely exploring. They're actually confined to a path. They can't walk through walls or fall through the floor, not because they've learned it's a bad idea, but because the game's fundamental rules, its physics engine, simply forbids it. It's not an option. And this slide right here, this is the key. It shows the huge difference between what's theoretically possible and what's actually allowed. On the left, you've got the total space. That's every conceivable state, all the glitches, the out of bounds areas, the whole shebang. But on the right, you have the admissible space, this tiny, narrow, predefined path where the rules are actually followed. And that's the only place the system can really exist. So this idea of a predefined path, that's the absolute core of this theory. It's a rules first way of looking at how things work, and uh, it has a pretty impressive name. It's called the Unified Field Theory of Information Dynamics, or UFTID for short. Yeah, it's a mouthful, I know, but don't let the name intimidate you. The core idea is actually super simple and kind of radical. Stability isn't achieved, it's enforced. A set of super rigid rules just forbids almost every other possibility from ever happening in the first place. And this just completely flips our usual idea of intelligence on its head, right? The system doesn't have to be smart at all. It's predictable simply because almost every other behavior is literally impossible. Its only job is to stay on the path it's been given. Just stay within the lines. Okay, but what happens when things do go wrong? I mean, what happens when our video game character glitches out and actually breaks a rule? We've all seen this happen, right? A character gets stuck in the scenery. They're in an illegal state. But the game doesn't usually just give up and crash. More often than not, the character gets pushed or reset back onto the legal path. Well, UFID actually proposes a formal mechanism for exactly how this correction works. The theory has a name for this correcting force, quadratic tension. The best way to think about it is like this. Imagine the valid path is a track and our character is connected to it by a really powerful rubber band. The second that character veers off the path and into the wall, that rubber band starts to stretch, creating this tension that just pulls it back. And the further it goes into the wall, the stronger that pull becomes. And this all happens in an automatic four-step process. So first, you get a violation. The system leaves the legal path. Second, tension builds up like crazy, like a stretch spring. Third, that tension hits a critical threshold, a breaking point. And finally, step four, recovery. The system deterministically, and that just means predictably, without any thinking, it snaps back to the nearest safe spot. It's a purely mechanical correction. Okay, so this is a really, really interesting idea, but what is it exactly? Is it like a new theory of physics? Is it supposed to replace our existing models? Let's take a second to clarify where UFTID actually fits into the world of science. All right, so first things first, let's be super clear about what this theory is not trying to be. It is not a new theory of fundamental forces. It's not trying to replace quantum mechanics or discover new particles. And as we've seen, it's explicitly setting itself up as an alternative to models based on learning and optimization. So then what is it? 
Well, U of T ID is best thought of as an architectural language. It's like a universal blueprint. It gives us a common set of terms, words like admissible space and tension, to describe how stability is built into any rule-based system. Doesn't matter if it's a crystal, a living cell, or a line of computer code. And this table really lays it all out, doesn't it? It's a tale of two completely different logics. UFTID sees the world as a rigid structure, where things happen because tension gets released. It's mechanical. It's geometric. And AI, on the other hand, sees the world as a sea of probabilities, where events are the result of calculated decisions. One is built on geometry and architecture, the other on statistics. They're just two fundamentally different ways of looking at reality. So where does all of this leave us? What's the big final takeaway? If this whole constraint-first view is a useful way of looking at the world, what does it really say about what's driving the complex systems all around us? The author of the paper, Translade, actually puts it perfectly in his conclusion. He reframes dynamics not as this free-for-all shaped by learning, but as simple motion that is just heavily constrained by a pre-existing geometry. The shape of the path comes first, period. And that's really the punchline of this whole thing. Maybe, just maybe, the order we see everywhere isn't the result of some cosmic intelligence or some grand optimization process. Maybe it's just the simple, unavoidable outcome of being forced to stay within incredibly narrow, incredibly rigid lines. The system isn't smart. It's just obedient. And that leaves us with one heck of a final question. If everything we see, all this complexity, all this stability, is just a system obediently following a pre-drawn map, then who or what drew the map?